Maybe I'll just talk around the question. <laughs> Those of us who uh, have been around for a little while has, have witnessed this uh, incredible growth in the practice where, you know, back in the 70s there were it was very much kind of a counterculture, very fringe activity with just some really wild hippies <laughs> doing this practice. And it was only happening in a few different places on the planet. You know, there was Mysore, of course, there was Encinitas, there was Maui, once David moved over there for the end of teaching. But uh, then, I guess New York City, Norman was teaching a little bit there, but other than that, I mean, it really wasn't happening. So what we've seen over the years is what at first was a very slow spread of the practice. Um, those of us who are trying to make a living teaching Ashtanga Yoga, as Dominic alluded to, had sometimes to take on second jobs to, to pay the rent. And, you know, we were wondering, because uh, we had this incredible experience of the practice as being something that was deeply transformative and, and wonderful. And we were thinking, why is it that more people aren't doing this practice? And so I would ask Guruji, Guruji, how come more people aren't doing this practice? And Guruji, in his wisdom, would say, slow growing is good. Um, meaning that, you know, if we want something to really have a strong foundation, it has to send down some deep roots. So that rooting process took gosh, quite a long time, a couple of decades, really, before Ashtanga Yoga really started growing kind of exponentially. I remember in the days when I first started traveling and teaching workshops, it was a pretty, pretty limited choices where I could go. You know, I could go to Los Angeles, I could go to Maui, teach at Nancy's place. Uh, I could go to maybe San Francisco, uh, Boulder. That was about it. It's a fairly short circuit. But uh, now, you know, hardly a week goes by that I don't receive an invitation to go to some exotic place on the globe and, and teach. So obviously, the practice has spread a great deal. and. Uh, Certainly that was Guruji's dream, that the practice would spread and, you know, he firmly believed that, that the world would be a better place with more people practicing yoga. Um, so, where is it going? Uh, it seems to still be spreading. Um, I mean, there are some places on the planet where it's still relatively new. I mean, here in this area, Ashtanga has been around San Diego for like 40 years and it's like old hat. It's like, you know, people's notion is like, oh yeah, I remember, I remember. I've been there, done that, you know. <laughs> What's next? But in different places on the planet, uh, it's, it's really just beginning to, to gain in popularity. So it's really been amazing to watch this. <coughs> this growth of the practice and it's truly become a worldwide thing. And, uh, so I think it's just going to continue to spread. Um, same place Jim said pretty much. Uh, I think that um, you know, whatever we put into it is, is what we're going to get out of it. And um, I think that Guruji taught us something really good and we should do it the best we can. And then it will be there for other people um, who come after us. Um, so, that's all, pretty much. I remember when Guruji passed and I thought, well, what now? 
what will happen now, now without him? And then I heard his voice inside my head, and he just said, just practice. <laughs> and so we continued, and I continued, and we all continued, and our students continued, and it continues. And I think one of the reasons that it will continue to grow is that I, we're looking for something. We're looking for something inside ourselves. And this yoga can help us to find it. It's as simple as that. This practice works. Whether it's, you know, historically or current, whether Krishnamacharya gave this to who, you know, this side or that side. The bottom line is it doesn't really matter. This practice is amazing. You cannot participate in, in it daily and not change and not transform. It, it has healing qualities no matter no matter what you start with, no matter how messed up you want to consider yourself. You know, we all got through it and we're actually functioning enough to sit here and speak with you. <laughs> <laughs> I think that there's um, that it will just it will go and it will heal the planet and Certainly, there are sides of the development of Ashtanga Yoga that may not resonate with everybody. You know, we may feel awkward about some elements of how it's manifesting in the West. But that's just superficial stuff. How it's manifesting inside the hearts of practitioners yeah, is, is unwavering in its, in its beauty and its uh, healing qualities. So I think it's going I don't know <laughs> where it's going. I never expected it to get to this point. So for me, it's already gone way past what I ever imagined. For, for me, it was a very individual experience. I never thought anybody else would want to do it. When we first came back, David Williams started teaching Hatha Yoga because he said, nobody will want to do this. It's too hard. And then we met Brad. And Bradley said, all my students are yours, David. Teach this to them. So it became something bigger than we imagined from the very beginning, really. So I have no expectations, no ideas of what's going to happen, whether it will fade away in something new that's better. I mean, with the technologies that are coming, who knows? Maybe we don't have to jump around and do all those things. Maybe something else will be there for us to transform our minds and our consciousness. So. I'm just curious, I'll see what happens. <laughs>